Hello, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to the Liberty Report. With us today, Chris Rosini, our co-host. Chris, good to see you today. It's great to be with you, Dr. Paul. Good, and Chris, you've been a big help this week. Our <laughs> personnel has been in and out, but you've been around every day. So that that's great. And, uh, so I won't have much to do today. You're going to carry on the whole thing. But, <laughs> yeah. uh, no, it's great to see you again. And uh, we uh, believe that Daniel, uh, he has had some family problems to deal with. I think he's coming back, uh, you know, this weekend and should be back in the office on Monday. So we might not have to call Chris. Chris, what are we going to do now? So, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we're ready to go. And we, uh, Chris and I have decided we wanted to talk about the dollar and the reserve currency of the world, which we have in the past because it's a big deal. Uh, you know, there's a whole conflict and interest in the dollar uh, for most people started in 1913. What will the Federal Reserve do to the dollar? Well, they've eliminated over 98% of its value compared to the value of a dollar back then. So it's an ongoing process and you can hardly uh, you can hardly think about dollar, and we want to talk today about, uh, uh, you, you, you know, the uh, liquidation or the change in the loss of uh, the dollar as a reserve currency. But you can't think about that without thinking about gold because they're interrelated. I mean, when, when we talk about the dollar, we talk about $20 an ounce gold. And then we go through, you know, the, the essentially the century of the manipulation. But the ratio is very important. And when the people get together and start manipulating, they manipulate the dollar uh, for the benefit of the bankers, but they also manipulate gold and it can get confusing. It's one of the reasons why I became fascinated with gold very early on, even prior to the breakdown of Bretton Woods in 1971, uh, because I found the story interesting. And then as I studied it more, I found out, you know, the dollar and the gold and the Federal Reserve is very deeply involved in the manipulation of the welfare warfare state and how they can pull the wool over the eyes of the average American and uh, say, oh, you're going to have a free lunch. We're going to have a welfare state. No problem. We just put up the money. But it hasn't worked out that way. And, and the one way I watch it is the ratio that the market is telling us about gold and silver. And it's very volatile, up and down. The dollar's value on international markets goes up and down, and uh, small events will have an effect, but also on gold. It's the reason why I work with Birch Gold, because they do provide information. And if you're interested in getting a, some free information from Birch Gold, you can text RON at 989898, and they will send you some information to see if you want to get further involved with gold and get some explanation, because that's, that's very important. Uh, but my goal has always been to understand the relationship of gold and silver. And the one thing about, uh, about the things that have generally been forgotten about money is we know about supply and demand. Everybody knows about the rules, supply and demand. If you have one product, supply goes up, prices go down, that sort of thing. But it was not originally known and it was only the Austrians that really emphasized the fact that the supply and demand of money is also important. So you have supply and demand of products and the supply and demand of gold. And this is why preserving the value of dollars is difficult. Uh, you know, if, you're, if, you, if you have savings in dollars, the same way is, uh, what about the gold market? It, it's something you have to keep up with because, uh, you know, Roosevelt, the first thing he did when, when he wanted to introduce, uh, you, you, you know, a whole, a whole new concept of economic policy, the first thing he did was take all the gold from the American people. So it is an important issue. And once again, if you want to follow up and get some free information from Birch Gold, it's uh, text RON at 989898. And now we, Chris and I, we'll talk a little bit about what we see coming because uh, we don't have, uh, uh, you, you, you know, we don't have absolute uh, insight to what's happening. But generally speaking, if you follow Austrian economics, you're able to spot trends and values and uh, changes that occur. What's difficult, of course, 
is predicting time and place because that involves a subjectivity of the people dealing with it. So you may know that next year gold is going to be $3,000 an ounce, but you don't know for sure if it is. And it may, you know, a year or so ago, it was $1,000, you know, and uh, now it's $2,000. So it's it, it involves a lot of people involved worldwide, uh, people who own gold and people who own dollars. And right now our challenge challenge, Chris, is uh, to give us, uh, give uh, our viewers an opinion on, uh, first, uh, I think most of them would agree there's trouble, there's trouble with the Fed and there's trouble with the dollar. But the big thing is, is how do you, how do you predict when, if we, if we knew next, in, next week, one in seven days, there was going to be an event that people were going to panic and race out of the dollar which quite frankly is a possibility, even though I, I'm not predicting that, and I think it's not likely, but it could. And that's the reason we want to uh, talk about it, because there is an element, you know, when it comes to it, you know, everything from the economic conditions here, war in Ukraine, our budgets uh, discussion, there's so many things that uh, have a very uh, definite uh, effect, uh, you know, on the value of the dollar and the value of gold. Chris. Yes, and we um, you, you spoke about trends, and we noticed a trend. We were reading an article, I think it was on Kitco, and uh, talking about the dollar and its share of global reserves has plummeted. Uh, it was 73% in 2001, which is not that long ago. It dropped to 55% in 2021, and then in 2022, it's down to 47%. So in just 20 years, the dollar as a reserve currency has dropped from 73% to 47%. That is a major shift. And uh, it's not surprising when you look at the last 20, 30 years of what the U.S. has done internationally. Uh, it's an empire, unfortunately, and empires need partners. And a lot of people around the world were involved with this. A lot of outside people. The American empire is not just Americans involved in this. You know, countries on the receiving end of all of our taxpayer money, A, they like that and want to keep that going, uh, just just like Americans like stimulus checks and want to keep that going and, uh, you know, complain when it has to stop. And if we are supposedly uh, defending other nations, that means they don't have to defend themselves. They could use their money for, you know, whatever else they want. They don't have to worry about defense. The Americans will take care of it. The American taxpayer will take care of it. So, you know, empires... And that's why it takes so long for global currencies to finally, uh, you know, go kaput. And they all do. They're without exception. Uh, what happens is people in the empire nation, they start overextending themselves. They want to rule the world. They want to spread wokeism. They go into all these different directions that stretch everybody thin. And eventually the rest of the world says, oh, whoa, we're not on board with all this. And then they start to peel themselves away. It first takes a few courageous ones to do it, bigger ones, and then the rest follow like dominoes. And, uh, you know, this 73% to 47% shows that the rest of the world has had enough of the American empire. Very good. And, you know, the conditions after World War II were conducive for uh, the United States to pick, uh, pick up the role of uh, issuing the reserve currency of the world because we had the military power. We were essentially uh, uh, saved from the devastation of Europe and Asia over the war. And we had most of the gold. I mean, hundreds of tons of gold we had. So we were very wealthy and we were a productive nation. So it did make sense. But they didn't go to a gold standard. What they did was well, they went to a gold reserve standard. They say, we'll, we'll, at the IMF meeting in 44, they say, what we'll do is uh, we'll guarantee the dollar. Anybody in a, from a foreign nation would come. And if you have a dollar, we're going to give you $35 an ounce. And then that everybody traded in gold. Then later on, we made promises to Saudi Arabia that, uh, you know, if you price your oil in, uh, in dollars, uh, we will guarantee your safety and security. Those things have started to change because one thing is, is we live way beyond our means. So even between 1944 and 1971, there were a lot of predictions that Bretton Woods was fake. 
at $35 an hour because we just were running the printing presses like crazy. So common sense said, well, that's going to devalue, that's going to lower the value of the dollar. So in dollar terms, the, the price is going to go up and uh, it's, it's eliminating the value that counts. It's not the price of gold uh, so much. So that, that was predictable in 1971. And then, then uh, to patch it up, of course, what we did was uh, uh, we uh, may, may, we had not been able to own gold as Americans, and uh, what they did then was uh, they they allowed foreigners were still allowed to do that. But by 1971, we didn't even have enough money to honor our commitment. So in a way, it was a form of bankruptcy that we were declaring. Uh, we were. In 1933, when we, uh, you know, took the gold away from the people, we were declaring that we intend to bankrupt ourselves with printing too much money. That happened in 1971. We quit fulfilling our promises that stabilized the world because people did believe that we would do it and follow through. So we say we uh, did that and uh, it, it worked uh, better than some would have predicted. So that, that, that to me is a, a, a big thing, but eventually, you know, the predictions have come true. Can't work for a long time, it's going to end. And that's what we are seeing now, because, uh, you know, we keep saying, when's it gonna end? When's it gonna end? But Chris, I think you and I can agree, and I imagine a lot of our viewers can agree, well, it's already starting, whether or not it's, it, but it's not concluded yet, because it'll be concluded when others use the currency. And that's what Chris was alluding to, that some countries are already doing it. More and more, we have a series of countries that are transaction, transacting their international accounts uh, in their own currencies and uh, ignoring it. But I think the big thing there is we have made a lot of enemies in the world. And, uh, you know, we put sanctions, and if sanctions don't work on people obeying what we tell them to do in foreign policy, uh, what we do is we bomb them. And lo and boy, then we're using them our money, uh, and, uh, and, and we run up these deficits. We're in the middle once again. How are we going to keep ourselves from defaulting? We have to raise the national debt, which I see as a farce because we're just defaulting on a daily basis. If the value, value of the dollar is going down, that means you're getting cheap dollars. And if you've saved your money in dollars, your, do your value of the, your dollar is going down. But uh, the one thing is, is uh, if if that continues, what has always happened though is the uh, is the dollar value of gold goes up. So it's one way a lot of people, including myself, we use that as a saving against this. But we're in the middle. We we are defaulting. So everybody talks. I, I, it, it's just a technicality in language. People will say, oh, "Well, we're, are are we going to default?" No. One party will say, "You guys are going to default." No, no, we will never default. Well, they're defaulting all the time. They've been doing it, especially, you know, since, the, uh, since Roosevelt. It's just, it manifests itself in different ways. But right now, it manifests itself by people now in a practical way, dealing with other currencies and groups of countries getting together. And it's not insignificant. It isn't just one or two countries. So I think very definitely we have, we have moved in the direction of accelerating our default. And, but the, 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 the big fear is, is when is it that people throw in the towel? They just throw it in. I can't keep up with this, and you know they're not they're not going to save the day. And and so <clears throat> the stalemate that they have in Washington, which goes on every couple of years to raise the debt limit, that may precipitate it or another uh, foreign policy failure. Uh, you know, one individual that when uh, uh, Chris, you were giving out those statistics, what's happened in this past year, and they said that was all because of Ukraine war. We, and Ukraine war had a lot to do with it, but I think it's bigger than that. I think it's our, our deficits for all kinds of reasons. I think it's the influence uh, of wokeism, internationally wokeism, which has interfered with uh, the soundness uh, of our economy, but also the protection of our liberties. Who knows? Somebody could probably make a pretty good case and say, this whole problem is your judicial system in the United States. It's a wreck. You can't depend on it, where at one time it was respected. So there are a lot of factors involved, but I think that I would take the position, Chris, 
that the default is ongoing and it's not going to slow up. It's going to get worse. And we have to look not only at the value of the dollar each day, what we have to look at is the dollar gold relationship. Yes, yes, very good. And yes, our country, unfortunately, has made many enemies. I and mean, we could go back to uh, uh, even the, not after 9-11, look how we attacked Iraq, who had nothing to do with it. And a million people died for, you know, they had nothing to do with it. You know, so it's not just the printing of money that has turned off other nations. It is, I, I'm sure that it is our foreign policy endless wars, sanctions. I mean, we even sanction allies. So even if you're an ally, you're not safe because it, you could be turned on at any time. Uh, even domestically, I'm sure the world sees this, that you know they're arresting a president that is running for re-election on amazing charges. <laughs> And, uh, you know, this the ideology of wokeness you mentioned, Dr. Paul. You know, other countries, I'm sure, do not want to be invaded so that woke can be brought to them so they could be so enlightened. They t definitely do not want that. In fact, half of our country doesn't even like it. So it's not just the printing of money that has turned other nations off because they print money too. So they're not, you know, philosophically against that, you know, oh, look, America's printing all this money. It's, oh, look, America is just running rampant all over the world, and we could be next. So they have to be working together, I'm sure, to be like, listen, we got to get out of this somehow. And dumping the dollar, you know, down to as much as it is in just a few short decades shows that they're, they're concerned and don't want to be a part of this anymore. Very good. And a lot of a lot of people will call in and inquire and try to get my opinion on on what what, what is going to be the nature of the replacement. And, you know, I don't real I don't really know, and I don't think anybody else knows. There's not the United States uh, position that they had after World War II arriving right now because uh, you know th there's a group. You say, well, maybe Russia can lead the right way. And you could argue the pros and cons of that. And you could argue about China. And then you could argue it's a group of countries. We have to realize that we have no respect for gold at all. Matter of fact, I think our government rigs the gold price in order to make the dollar look stronger and, and they will continue to do that, which really confuses people on their, uh, how, to, how to protect against it. So that, that is what, uh, what is happening. And uh, the, the, dollar, the dollar will respond and the market gives us a lot of information about what the, what the uh, governments are doing, uh, more so than what the uh, financial markets will tell us, you know, the, the, the people who are interpreted, because you can't know exactly. But I'll tell you what, if, if, if a government debases its currencies, turns on the printing presses, have unlimited spending, and teach in a part of a philosophy that, that deficits don't matter, and that uh, you, can, you can save the world through uh, environmentalism, printing money, wokeism, you know, the whole works. There's so many failed ideas. And they don't talk about, well, maybe the problems can be solved with a good dose of liberty. And I keep thinking that's what happened in 1921. Uh, they had not accepted, the politicians nor the uh, economists had accepted the idea that the government had to do everything conceivable. But they had build a bubble after World War One, And uh, so the, the recession, depression, it actually was a depression. The GDP crashed, but they were not conditioned to do the bailing out. And, uh, you know, and a lot of people lost a lot of money, but it only lasted a year because they still, they concentrated on not bailing out and also to uh, ma maintain a more balanced budget. We didn't have wars going on like now, and we didn't have a welfare state. In one year, you know, we got over it, but eventually you have to liquidate the debt. And, uh, but we're already working hard at it. I think the officials already knew that because even before these recent uh, crises that we've been dealing with the last four or five years, you know, our Federal Reserve was saying, you know what we need? We need to, the prices aren't going up fast enough, but we need to aim for at least a devaluation of the, of the, of, uh, the dollar by a 2% price inflation rate. Uh, Who ever heard of such nonsense? But of course, when it hit two, you never saw it because it quickly went to 10. 
and uh, they're still embarked on that. So uh, it's the fallacy of economic policy, I believe is the most significant thing which occurred at the beginning of the last century and we're still uh, obsessed with that. So I think it's interesting now that we see China challenging us because they're investing the money they earn when we buy their stuff in, in the world. At the same time, all we do is we, we they, they, they invest the money they are, and we, we just buy bombs and destroy the property they're building. That doesn't make any sense, but it'll come in the end because this is not durable, it can't last this way. So once again, I always go back that we have to concentrate on a better understanding of economics and how important the, uh, the uh, how important the principle of liberty really is. And uh, I think that basically is one of our dedications for this program. Chris. Yeah, it's very good, Dr. Paul. Uh, I'm going to give my closing thoughts now. Uh, the way I see de-dollarization is that uh, I believe the rest of the world is going through their own version of Trumpism. You know, Trump symbolized here in this country a growing disgust with the uh, way that the nation is heading. And f foreign nations cannot vote here, foreigners cannot vote here, but they can de-dollarize. And that is, that you, you want to hit the empire in the wallet, that's where you do it. Uh, this is all good in the long term for us and the world because we were not supposed to be an empire. We're supposed to be a limited government republic uh, with where individual liberty can thrive and flourish. Empire is the exact opposite of that. Uh, our, our founding documents are very clear about that, about what this nation was founded upon. You know, in the, but progressivism took over and now we're, uh, you know, seeing the results of it and the results are as bad as one would have predicted a hundred years ago. Uh, but as people here and people out there in the world abandon this idea of this American empire that's going to rule every inch of the earth, uh, you know, we have a chance to head in the right direction. And, you know, libertarianism, uh, conservatism, there is no perfect, there, there will never be any perfection. There will be problems in free markets. There will be problems with individual liberty. They will just be more localized. They will not be where everybody suffers at the same time with centralization. So we have a chance to head in the right direction and that's what life is all about. Which direction are you heading? If you're going the wrong way, turn around and head the right way and you'll have a better life. So, you know, as bad as all this stuff is, the future can be very bright and that's you know we hope that we make our little contribution to helping that happen yeah, very good chris uh, I, i'm going to close by making a uh, statement but it's not a prediction that i know this is going to happen but evidence shows that uh, they've made progress and that's the BRICS. you know you know the five countries that have come together one thing is is they respect gold they buy gold and they're working together one it uh, malaysia was not part of the BRICS, but i found it interesting that china and malaysia are are getting together and uh, and then also uh, china is more now in the position of uh, the the peacemaker than the warmonger which i think also helps them so I would keep an eye on BRICS, and if they continue or accelerate their purchase of gold, because yes, they can say they're going to do things like we have, but they have to be held uh, to the fire, you know, feet to the fire, because so often uh, the governments, almost always governments, uh, bend the rules, and that is why eventually the best standard of money, where you can define the currency and define a unit of account would would be that it's easily convertible into something that you can measure and you can define and that is a, a coin a coin that you could have it it doesn't mean you have to have a coin for every transaction that's a fallacy that's not true but you want to measure every transaction uh and people can loan money to each other in a way you know how much are we going to do and as long as you as long as you know the definition uh, and there's credit out there just so the government doesn't have license to control, spin, run wars in the welfare state and think that they can run their empire. That is coming to an end. And when the empire ends, 
it'll be, uh, you know, uh, in, in, in con, it, it will be at the same time that the dollar is ending as well. They may come together one on top of the other. So I think we live in interesting times, but very dangerous. So I think the more knowledge and understanding we have, the better it is. But I would still vote first for liberty to solve most of our problems. I want to thank everybody for tuning in today to the Liberty Report. Please come back soon.